Oh my. That's Harrison Burton up front. Now he is in second. He has no first gear, uh, we're told. And here they come. Logano, Burton, Redding, Cody Ware up there, William Byron, Suarez Chastain, and they're on it. And here we go. Oh, yeah. oh boy. Whoa. Look at this. All the way down to pit lane on the inside. Lock him up. Oh, the 45 overshot turn one. No, Six no. wide. All right. Great move. He was Bold just smart. Move. Smart, staying out of it, going wide. Interesting. Wow, that is such a cool view. You know, and that's exactly what Logano couldn't afford to do. He needed to come off of turn one in that lead and didn't. That was Brian Campy up on the box for William Byron. Former IndyCar champion winning lead engineer. I like your pick, Mike. Chastain, new life for him. Woo. Oh, Reddick sends it. He loves those braking zones. That's got to be where the lap time and the majority of the lap time is coming from, is all these braking zones into 1, 11, and 12. So in qualifying, the difference that I saw between Byron and Reddick, Byron won the pole, and his Chevy seemed to have more speed down the straightaways. Reddick would eat him up in the braking zones. All right, well, that wow. Sense. Tell you who didn't. Suarez. Big time dive bomb, couldn't get it slowed down, shot off the racetrack. But this is again the, the who's who of the road racing group. I mean, Byron, I, I would have thought he had a top five and a win by now, but we've got Reddick, we've got Chastain, Bowman, Suarez, and Dylan's always a little sneaky. And then Bell won the Roval last year. I mean, this is the, the normal, the usual suspects. You see Almendinger on the inside there trying to dig out of that hole. Yeah, he's got his work cut out for him for sure. Thirty four cars on the lead lap. Coming to twenty four to go. I would have thought we'd seen more rooting and gouging and throwing fenders and slamming doors, but it was fairly civilized again on that restart. There's still a long way to go. I mean, you see 24 up there, but that's that's with 3.41 miles attached to 24 laps. So here's the replay, and, and I would have thought Reddick, with that Monster Energy Claw to the inside, would have just cut, turned, and left, but he missed the corner. Yeah, just too deep. Yeah, he well, flat out handed the lead back to those guys. <laughs> and they were six wide in the back. Wow. So we've got some radio chatter from earlier. Uh, drivers and spotters talking about restarts from one of the earlier cautions. Uh, we'll begin with spotter uh, Stevie Reeves. Yeah, well, we're in the middle of like four wide right there. They're all coming up the hill. We only see the roof, so that'll help me. Yeah, that particular restart, he actually had clear all the way to the bottom if he wanted to. But I know you can't tell from them driving up the hill at you. Well, I'll tell you my year on this restart, maybe get a little bit more aggressive, but I don't want to take a bunch of risks now or fast if we have speed track. Absolutely, buddy. You got it. So, yeah, let it sort out. Just work on your aggression as we go. And um, you're a good road racer, man. Believe in yourself. You can do this. That was from Jordan Taylor earlier in the race, and it was spot on for what we saw right off the bat. Trying to be patient, take care of that car, because he knew it was fast. Aggression's the name of the game of these boys. They don't play. Sixth place here. Suarez and Bell, who went to victory lane the last time we were on a road course at the Charlotte Roval. Xfinity fastest lap of the race. Uh, we mentioned it when it happened. Tyler Reddick, 92 and a half miles per hour average. Todd Gilliland firing off on uh, fresh tires, 92.3. Byron Bush Suarez. Man, I don't know if he's going to have enough, Kurt. Byron run a 213.71. Reddick, 
so fast in that 45 car. You know what happened with that last run was that the 45, when they aborted the whole situation, they might not have been totally full on fuel. We know now that they had to pack it full of fuel and the balance might have changed here on the short run. But these are the two guys that sat on the front row. These are the two guys that have been setting the pace. We've now got the two fastest cars running one, two with a long way to go. This, this is gonna be a sword fight. It's gonna be a gunfight. It's gonna be a knife fight. But it's a matter of when do you pull out those little weapons to, uh, to get the advantage. Or you just do it right now. Chase winded. Oh, here goes <laughs> right to the inside, like you said, right now. And crossing right over is Byron. Perfect crossover. They're now going to be side by side down this whole straightaway. And it's like, who's going to outbreak whom? And I think the and 45 is going to try to stick it on the outside here because he'll have the inside for turn 13. Took the words out of my mouth. That's what I was going to say there. Not only do you have to outbreak him, strategize and who has a track position, ah, third line on the exit. He and let him go. An opportunity for Chastain to close there. Not sure he quite made the most of it, but Oof. see those two cars ahead side by side. Yep, there's the one. Stuff. He likes this. Reddick loves to be on the inside there. And now you're going to cross back under? Sure as heck did. You over? I love that section of the racetrack. <laughs> Look at this. Now they're back side by side, the opposite side, but the 45 will have the inside all the way through the carousel. Four different opportunities in a row to cross each other back over. Can he shake him? Order. He didn't shake him. I'm with him here. He now Byron's got the advantage. That's good racing. And they are racing each other with a lot of respect right now. <laughs> Can the 45 cross back under? He's gonna try. And he's not gonna quite get there. Chase, what do you think? Is it a little too soon for this kind of uh, kind of back and forth, or you just take it where you can get it? No, I definitely don't think it's too soon, and for a couple of reasons. You know, one, as you see Tyler trying to get back to the inside of William, but again, he's going to be in a bad spot for coming back down the hill. But I think you want control of the race because the longer you're running behind somebody, the the hotter your tires are get, and you're making it harder for you to make that pass later on down the road. So I think you want to get it done while you can, and I think that's why you see Tyler pushing so hard to do it but it is it is interesting watching them exit 11 and coming on the front straight away that guy on the inside is at such a disadvantage because of the grip that the paint has um, and those guys want to get out there to that paint to help them get down those straightaways all right here's that turn eight nine reddick's there 10 is the fastest corner on the track right here and down into 11. You're spot on, Eli, though, Kurt. This Reddick is so position. much do faster under braking. This end of the racetrack, he's just so hard to keep behind you. Hey, boys, three-horse race now. I mean, Chastain was right there at the corner. Didn't get as good a launch off uh, of turn 11, but uh, if, if these guys keep running side by side, it'll be a three-car race. Watch how much better he can get in the corner than William. It's been that way all day long. And now can he close the door? Can he shove him off into the white paint area? Yes. Yes. Now if you, you got to protect him. If you get hit from behind, you got to be ready for the hit from behind. This is a tough section to run away from somebody. Such slow corners, it's easy for somebody to come back and, and bump you from behind. What's Red Reddick's heartbeat now? How about 184? He is pumping. Wow. I think he might have finally found just enough wiggle room to try to break away. Look at come right back down after we got that lead. Whew, I feel better. And now Byron's under pressure from Chastain. So now Byron's got to look in the mirror and try to still chase down Reddick and hit his marks. Let's see if Chastain's as clean as the way the other two raced. <laughs> Behind Chastain is Alex Bowman with a little unfinished business with Chastain from last year's finish here. Exactly right, but that shows you again Bowman putting himself in position. I mean, he's always there. He's like that stealthy guy that always shows up at the end of these races. 